Um, let's take a real quick look at where we are, and hopefully some of you guys got some interesting tones out of that, or um, some experiments with the speakers in less than 1.6. Um, I did put a little bit of code in here for a um, buzzer with a loop. So if you pull that up, I think if you click on it, it'll show the code. You can copy and paste it. Um, I think I can also make that downloadable. But this added in a little loop where it will go to a analog write, kind of like the dimmable LED, the pulse width modulated LED, that um, breathing LED. Um, it'll go through and make it softer and bring it back up to 255 so you can get a little bit of pitch out of the um, buzzer like we did with the LED. Um, and not quite as adjustable as the, the tone thing that we did. But I put that in for challenge two or a four counter. Um, you could also use that same counter to count from like one to a thousand and um, use the different delays and um, experiment with that a little bit. So I figured I'd let you play with that. There is a little quiz on lesson 1.6. And for today, I wanted to do a simple um, memory game, a Simon game. And some of you may have already played this or be familiar with it. And what I chose to do instead of writing the whole thing up is I wanted to go through an online tutorial. There are tons and tons of sites out there with tutorials. So basically what I did is I pointed you to a, a um, URL on the Arduino site, which pulls up an Arduino game. Now, one thing you'll find with a lot of the online tutorials, they do not go into a lot of instructions on building and this one is no exception they expect you to kind of look at the code and know what's happening know what hooks up and how it hooks up by the code itself um, that's why it's nice to put the variables in the beginning they do show you a picture of it on breadboard and wires but the code is here and you can download it or copy and paste it and they'll show you a little bit of operation but you notice they declare variables up in the beginning for pin modes for your LEDs and the wires, and they're doing that. Instead of really showing you in detail or giving you detailed wire instructions, you kind of include that in the code. And also the commenting in the code sometimes helps. Now, there's gonna be a lot of stuff in here that we have never discussed yet. Um, not a big deal. Um, just be aware of that. And um, we'll talk about some of these things as we go through. But basically what I want you to do is try building this. This is a 200 line project. Um, there's also a wiring diagram if you want to try and make some sense of that. It's a little bit challenging the way they have it set up, but um, that's what we got to work with. That's what was supplied in this tutorial. Um, there's probably about no less than 20 or 30 Simon games out there, and I'm going to work with this game. I might supply some different code for one that I've done where I've changed a few things around, and we'll be adding some features to it in the future. But for today's project, I simply wanted you to try and build this tutorial. The, the tutorial's kind of basic. They don't give you a whole lot of details on it, a couple pictures and a code collection. Um, but I think you'll be able to build up a project with this. It uses all of the um, components we've used, the buttons, the LEDs, and the buzzer all in one. So you should be able to build this up and upload the code and get it to work. And what I want you to consider on this for your challenge or your unit quiz is the following thoughts, because you got a little quiz here. Um, your quiz will actually be, here, let me back up one step. We got the lesson, but I can't put the quiz inside the lesson. Um, your quiz is very open-ended. It's a text thing. So when you attempt it, um, it's simply going to bring up a text box and give you some things to discuss and write about. Give you thoughts or reaction on the Simon Memory Game tutorial. Were you able to get the project built and functional? What code looked familiar? What code was completely new? And this is kind of the trick question. What modifications can you think of for the code or wiring that would improve this project? Um, 
be careful what you put in there. You might find yourself having to do those modifications. <laughs> um, really, it's there to get you to think about, hey, that's, you know, I think it would be better if we did this or if we did this instead. So um, start thinking about that. And some of those things that you probably want to put in there, um, we will be working on the next section because we're going to learn how to use more components and how to also understand data and what the Arduino is doing. And that's gonna be our next unit. So that will kind of wrap up this unit with a very open-ended question, but I'm looking for your thoughts. Put sentences, use complete thoughts so they make sense. And um, give me a little bit of feedback on there. And I'm doing that more just to kind of figure out where you guys are at and um, how the assignments are going so far. And if you have any other questions or you want to tinker with the other stuff, or even if, hey, I'm bored and um, have a little bit of time, you can always type in Arduino and follow it up with a part. You know, it serves a digital temperature and humidity sensor or a liquid crystal display or a motor. And you can look stuff up and start tinkering with that and playing with it with other online tutorials if we haven't gotten to them yet. And we will start with more components next time we meet. So with that thought, I will let you uh, try and build a Simon game, and hopefully we can get that working soon. And uh, we'll elaborate on that project and modify that project as we move forward. Sound good? So is that it for today? That's it for today. Um, let's play a game of Simon. <laughs>